There's lots of videos and information out there about what kind of fishing knots are the strongest to tie. Not only the strongest to tie, but what kind of knots are the fastest and easiest to tie, or the most consistent to tie, or even knots that have the smallest profile. So there's lots of opinions and even data out there about what kind of knots are the best. Um, however, at the end of the day, I think the best knot to tie for a given situation and fishing conditions is going to be the knot, obviously, that you personally tie the best. Um, and that's going to be a measure of how consistently you tie it and how strong of a knot it is for you. So let's move on to the next part of this video. and I'm going to talk about um, how this test unit works, why I designed it this way, and I'll um, show it working in action. So let's move on to that. So this is the test jig. It basically works by transferring water from a bucket up here that's sitting on a scale. And there's a gravity feed through this plastic tubing down into a run of stainless steel piping that empties itself into another bucket at the other end. And I'll show that in just a minute. But you're probably wondering why I have a water bucket set up and why I didn't just use a spring scale like this. The reason why is because when I would tie my knots off to this hook, and then pull back on it, not only was the, my pulling force inconsistent from knot to knot, um, but as I got up to 40 and 50 pound test, the recoil from that spring in there, when that line breaks, that recoil causes that spring to go backwards, and after around a dozen or 15 tests or so, it would actually crack the top of the cap here and eventually would bust through it. So I tried two of these scales and didn't get through probably more than maybe 30 knots, and at $25 a piece, it was going to become expensive testing, considering I was doing more than 100 knots. Um, so I did give this a try. It works if you're doing just a couple of knots. Uh, you could use this, but if you're doing 40, 50 pound line, you're probably going to break it at some point. So that's what basically drove me to the water bucket method. So let me give you a video tour of it from top to bottom, and you can see how it works. So at the top we have our bucket filled with water and by gravity feed it will come down through this tubing right into our test jig through those swage lock fittings and at the back end of the test jig I have the line secured with a crimp and an anti-chafing spring to the eyelet. The reason I tie it off like that rather than making a knot in the eyelet is because the knot in the eyelet if I were to do that might actually be weaker than the knot down further in the line that I'm actually trying to test. So the best way to make sure that the securing end is as secure as it can be is to use a crimp, crimp sleeve, and that spring. So getting back to the water, again it comes down through the fittings into this run of stainless steel half inch tubing held in place by those Behringer clamps and eventually it gets to the knot itself which you can see right there. Now at the other side of the knot, the line continues to travel down into this pulley. As it exits the pulley, it goes down into that notch in the wood. As the line goes through that notch in the wood, it comes down here into this receiving bucket, which is filled with 20 pounds of weight. And again, it's secured here, like it is at the back end, with a crimp sleeve and a stainless steel anti-chafing spring. So the way this is set up, I should really be testing the breaking strength of the knot and not any of the securing ends on the bucket or the eyelet further upstream. Now as the water comes down through that piping, it comes through this shutoff valve, down through the pipe and then into the bucket. Now I put 20 pounds of weight in the bucket because I typically like to prime the bucket with pretty much 50% to two-thirds the rated strength of the line I'm testing. So since I was testing 30 pound line in this jig right now, I would typically fill the bucket with 15 to let's say about 20 pounds of weight. It makes the testing go smoother, faster, and gets the line under tension initially. And it doesn't, and it doesn't affect the test results. But as enough water enters this bucket, it gets to a point where the bucket is heavy enough that the line breaks. When that happens, this shutoff valve is closed immediately and then I can go over here to the scale weight indicator where the bucket is attached to, record the change in the weight of the bucket and add that to the weight that I had in the bucket with the weights originally.
Those two values will tell me the breaking strength of the line. Now you might be asking, how do I know that this setup is actually accurate as much as it might actually work? The reason why is if you look at these figures here, I initially tested this out with 25, or actually 30, 40, and 50 pound triple X Iser line. And the test results show that it is very repeatable. The question is, is it accurate? At least that's the question I had because I noticed that the 30 pound Iser line was breaking at quite a bit higher than 30 pounds. So I thought maybe there was something wrong with my test jig. But as I began to talk to a lot of people, I found out that Iser line, it's pretty common for it to test out above uh, what it's actually rated for in the labels from the spools you buy. So the fact that the 30 pound broke around 40 um, isn't that surprising. And it basically told me that my test jig is both repeatable and it's accurate. So given that, I went on and tested the next 100 knots knowing that I had an effective setup. So let's move on to the next section where we're actually going to watch the unit in motion as it breaks through one of the knots. So those were two of the more than 100 tests I tried. When we look at 40 pound Seagauer knots versus 40 pound Sturgeon's knots, breaking strength was typically between 30 and 33 pounds across um, all different varieties that I tested. And there really wasn't, statistically speaking, any significant difference. When we bump up to 50 pound Seagauer versus Sturgeon's knots, and again, this is mono to fluoro connections, it typically ranged between 38 and 42 pounds. Again, not very much difference there either. Now when we move over to 40 pound class RP knots versus my improved Albrights, and my improved Albrights are tied by wrapping up eight times, wrapping back down eight times, and then adding a dab of glue. They do range quite a bit, but looking at 30 to 45 pounds for a typical range, and uh, that is a result I did not expect when I started this testing. It's really um, I guess that they test high, but there really is quite a bit of variability, and I really didn't expect that. When we go over to the 50 pound class, the RP knot versus the improved Albright, uh, the range is still pretty wide. We're looking at anywhere from 37 pounds typically up to 55 pounds. It's kind of interesting that I'm able to tie the RP knot a lot more consistently in this line class than I am the improved Albright, but Still, there's a lot of variability here, and I, I was again surprised by it. So in the end, this test jig is repeatable and accurate, and I certainly like using it better than a spring scale. And I got some surprising results along the way. I really didn't expect Iser Line, Triple X, Mono, and 30, 40, and 50 pound class to break as high as it did. Um, I also didn't expect my reverse Albright knots to have such a wide range of breaking strengths. I thought they'd be more consistent. And I, like I said before, I think that's going to drive me to use more wind-on leaders, maybe more bimini to reverse Albright connections. Uh, maybe I'll start with the FG knot. The only drawback with this test jig is that I can't really go beyond 50-pound line. And the reason why is because that bucket that you see at the end really can't hold probably more than about 65 to 70 pounds of uh, water and weights. So I think the jig itself is capable of testing 100 pound line, but I need to get this outside, uh, a different setup and bigger buckets to make it happen. So stay tuned, there'll be more videos in the future. Next up I'll be looking at hook to line connections. I'll be looking at the Spangler knot, my personal favorite. 
along with the Palomar and San Diego jam knots. I'm going to find out which one I tie best. And keep in mind, it's a knot I tie best. I'm not necessarily saying that any of those three knots are the best knot, but we'll find out which one I tie the best. In the meantime, if you have any comments to this video, put it in the comments below and I'll definitely reply back to them. Thanks for watching.